So I don't, I don't have a HR background, but um, I would say I've come from the trenches developing technology. And I traditionally have rescued and salvaged failing digital projects in corporates. What I've learned is over 50 projects, it's not the technology. I'm sorry to say, but a lot of the problems are people related. And I've learned more about people, more so after working with government for nine months. And I came out a philosopher. Plato, Socrates, Marcus Aurelius, my best friend. Um, I've also worked with the likes of Hoyts, Optus, Telstra, Visa, MasterCard, either from an um, emerging technology um, introduction perspective or from a management consulting payments type background. So my passion is all around blockchain. I've been an advocate since 2009 in the beginning. Um, artificial intelligence, security, robotics, everything in that space that comes out of science fiction basically. So. I love where we are now. It's like best time to be alive. Every day there's something out of science fiction um, coming out of the page. So I travel four times a year and I have robots as friends. I'm embedded in all these various communities globally. I go to Malta once a year, Tuscany as well, Singapore, and I collaborate globally to try and find good people, shared visions, shared values. So what have I learned? I've learned that it's not just Industrial Revolution 4.0. I'm totally aligned with Donna there. But I see three components of the tsunami coming ahead. Technological singularity with the introduction of AI, blockchain, Internet of Things, genetic sequencing, disrupting the world today. Then we look at the financial aspect. Uh, I do believe that the financial markets aren't doing too well. And GFC was only the beginning. There's a huge transfer of wealth as well in non-traditional um, sectors. If you look at cryptocurrencies, the concept of value transfer as well, it's not just uh, financial in terms of, uh, uh, what do you call it, <laughs> traditional fiat currency. Uh, and also there's a renaissance, as um, uh, Donna mentioned. People are also more cognizant about how do we make sure we leave the earth a better place than when we left it. So with all that happening, how's that coming into the workplace? I see it in many ways. Technology disruption, globalization, how do we work with people around the globe in a decentralized manner? We're automating, that's going to completely displace jobs. It will create pay inequality as well. People's value is in their labor. So what they're able to earn today, they may not be able to earn tomorrow. So I'm also speaking to people about mapping capabilities of future jobs and um, how, how we actually um, uh, use technology to actually um, help in that space. Working with outsourcers and freelancers, workplaces struggle. Um, eight hour days versus outcomes based. You know, if I can do my work in three hours, why should I sit there for five hours and pretend to work? That's also a different discussion. Um, how do you manage traditional payroll benefits? Also people, aren't always looking at the monetary value in the workplace. So that's another aspect of um, you know, making people happy in staff, um, staff um, acquisition. Culture, that's a big area um, in terms of the stress in creating diversity in the workplace. How do you manage that? Um, code of conduct, Donna mentioned before, toxicity in the workplace, huge. Um, fallout from change managers within HR roles, Every single workplace that I actually collaborate with or speak to have these issues, leadership issues, passive aggressive behavior. Uh, how do we as just humans to human um, manage that? And it, a lot of it stems from the personal environment as well. Poor communication, then again, that goes into workplace conditions. Mobility, with the lockdown of security, it's very hard to collaborate in the workplace. Use of technology is being locked down. Um, I, I'm feeling that we're getting pushed back to the 1980s in terms of our collaborative tools um, and also talent and retention. So yes, I believe we should automate jobs. I believe we should automate the jobs that are repetitive, that um, probably someone's gonna combat me, that's not meaningful. Let's move humans up the value chain. All this repetitive stuff, and I see HR doing a lot of administrative work when there's a need to please help out the people with actual problems that they need, they need help on, um, counselling and so forth. Like, get out of all the administration stuff and help the people. 
Um, and Henry Ford, back in the first Industrial Revolution, coined the term the weekend. He gave, two people, uh, gave people two days off, Saturday and Sunday, so they would actually um, leverage their leisure time, utilize the cars, and that's um, how we got the weekend. So why, why sh shouldn't we have a three-day weekend, potentially? Let's automate the jobs, give people a little bit more leisure time, um, and create a three-day weekend. <laughs> Okay, so just to set the record straight, AI. I believe the likes of Google have set the bar too high. It is not that smart yet. And why I say that is everyone's working on a slither of AI. They're either working on the image recognition component, natural language, um, the uh, speech recognition and so forth. So we are working on elements of artificial intelligence. Um, and my call out is how do you make that interaction as seamless as possible? And we do need to start working together. If we don't, if you look at the human progress, we've plotted along, we've become intelligent, intelligent. We're really here down the bottom because when the machines take over, they're going to supersede us. If we don't learn to work with them now, um, they may take over. <laughs> so that's an another job to be created in the future. And what I've tried to do is map HR functions in where you can potentially leverage technology, automation, machine learning, and so forth. In terms of contingent workforce hiring, how do you automate in that space? How do you manage diversity and reduce bias in terms of monitoring within um, the you know, CVs that you go through, take the names off and so forth, predictive analytics, um, learning and development. How do you manage the workforce and upskill them? We won't have one-on-one -on -one available in most cases. Um, <laughs> talent engagement. Um, I was speaking to a couple of um, psychologists, clinical psychologists, in how to prescribe surveys. One minute, okay. Um, and just to wrap it up, I believe that the focus should be around the user experience of the employee. How do we make that experience as seamless as possible? Let's reduce all the manual paper that they have to put in, all the forms, all the leave forms, automate it, um, and uh, make life easier for everyone. And my call out, so my call out is basically we need to start embedding elements of artificial intelligence within organizations. So, so we're able to move humans up the value chain and make sure we don't win the race to the bottom. So, and yeah, if you've got any questions, please um, call out. Thank you.